I put it on record my thanks to all those who have worked so incredibly hard in developing this bill. For almost 50 years, this country has been bound by the common agricultural policy. With its legis legislative roots in the Treaty of Rome, the policy has been dictated to us by the bureaucrats in Brussels for too long. All of the farmers I speak with welcome this opportunity for change, but also the security of farm payments until 2022. This bill is a once in a generation opportunity to form our own bespoke agricultural policy, allowing us to cater not to the needs of the maize growers of Poland and the citrus growers of Catalonia, but to the farmers of Cumbria, Caithness and Cornwall. Yeah, 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 I was delighted to hear, not just once, but twice, the Secretary of State referred to the Cumbrian Lake District in his opening remarks, recognising the importance of lowland and upland farmers. This is our chance to tailor legislation to the needs of British farmers and maximise their businesses. It is key that we ensure that our agriculture sector is agile, diverse and efficient in an ever globalised economy. However, it is important to note one of the key features in this bill, and that is securing a new system based on paying public money for public goods. This new system will undoubtedly give one of the largest boosts to food production, environmental protection, rural public access and flood reduction that we have seen in this Parliament. More than any other industry, farmers transfer their knowledge and experience from generation to generation. Farmers know their land best. Environmental protections play a crucial role in ensuring a sustainable agriculture sector. Ultimately, it is nature that underpins our farming system. With insect pollination worth £690 million to UK farming, it is vital that we give our farmers the environmental protections they need to create an economically and environmentally sustainable food production industry. Another critical issue related to this bill is flood reduction measures. I'm sure many members in this house will remember the devastation caused by Storm Desmond in December 2015. And while I commend the government for investing millions of pounds in flood defences, we must not forget that one of the most effective ways of reducing a storm's impact is to work with our farmers and riparian owners on methods such as planting riverside woodlands and increasing surface infiltration, which will also support the benefits to wildlife and their habitat. I'm, in particular, I would like to see added protection for our native species, like the iconic red squirrel, whose habitat has been disrupted by the Forestry Commission and others. This bill, however, is not limited to attaining public goods for public money, but also opens our eyes to the world of opportunities available to our agriculture sector. The provisions set out by the Secretary of State, which allows the collection of supply chain data could unlock a huge boost in productivity, which our economy sorely needs. It could allow the minimising of, minimising of risk, waste and environmental harm. Three things are a key for a sustainable industry. I'm so pleased that this government recognises the value of school visits, and I commend farmers in my Copeland constituency, like farmer Kevin Holliday, who has welcomed hundreds of school children and indeed gave me my first experience of lambing a ewe during the spring whilst on my roadshow of farm visits. With Brexit on the horizon, it's time to make this significant investment in agriculture. It's time to ensure that the young farmers understand the terms and conditions for their future, to enable better productivity, and it's time to back British farming. Yeah. 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 Yeah.